What's up everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 9 of the tutorial series on AWS HTTP API. So guys, in this tutorial, we will see how we can configure and handle cores that is cross-origin resource sharing. And then we will also have a look at the exception raised by the cores. So what exactly cores is? So I will quickly give you a very high level definition of what is cores. So cores is an HTTP header based mechanism that allows us to request or access restricted resources of let's say Y domain from X domain which is ideally prohibited by SOP, that is source origin policy. Now, even if we look at the full form of the cores, that is cross origin resource sharing. Now, if we break it down, what does cross origin means? It means that the origin of both the domain are different, right? So just to give you an example, the origin could be xyz.com to abc.com, right? So the origin of both the domain are different here. And then we have resource sharing. So resource sharing means the sharing of the resource among different domains, which does not fall under the same origin. So that's basically cross origin resource sharing. Now uh, let's also have a look at what kind of requests are qualified as the course request. So here I have a few requests that could be qualified as the course request. So let's say the request from srcecd.com to google.com. So here we have different domain. Then we have srcecd.com to srcecd.com, but at different port. And then a request from a domain to a subdomain of the same domain, right? So that is srcecd.com to resource.srcecd.com, right? Or it could be any subdomain. And then finally, if we are trying to access the resources from https srcecd.com to http srcecd.com, it means from different protocols. So here we have HTTPS here. We are trying to access the resources that is uh, residing on the HTTP SRC CD.com, right? So these are the few requests that could be qualified as the course request. So guys, uh, this is course at the very high level and I can do in-depth video on course. If you like, please let me know in comments if you want me to do the video, a full video on course. So now uh, moving along, let's go back to our console. So here I have this API that is HTTP API that we are using across this tutorial series. So what we are going to do here is that we are going to first create the resources or the routes. So to create the routes, click on routes from the left panel. Here we will say create and then we will say get method followed by the name of the route or the resource. So I will say course demo and then I will say create. Now here what I want is I want to create another method under course demo, right? So right now we have get. So I also want post method under slash course demo route or the resource. So to do that again, we will click on create. We will select the appropriate method. So in my case, it's post. And then I will say the same resource name, right? That is course demo. So what this will do is it will create the method under the same resource that is course demo. Now uh, we have created the get and post method. We are going to bind the Lambda function. So I will say get attach integration. I will choose the existing integration that is HTTP API hyphen Lambda and I will say attach integration. Similarly, even for the post method, I will select the same integration and I will say attach integration. Now uh, the integration part is done. We will navigate to the Lambda function that we have attached. Now here we are going to uh, write few lines of code. So what we are going to do is since this Lambda function is attached with the post and get method, we are going to place a condition. So that would be, let me copy and paste. So we have added simple if condition that if event of request context of HTTP of method is double equal to post then return post method invoke and then uh, if the method is get or the get method is invoked then return get method invoke right so that's a very simple code that we have added so i'm going to save this and say deploy so again to summarize we have simply added two if condition so we are checking if the post method is invoked then we will return appropriate message that is post method invoked and then if the get method is invoked, then we will send the appropriate response saying get method invoked. That's it. Correct. So now we have successfully configured the Lambda function. 
Correct. Now what we are going to do is if we want to use the custom stage or the manual deployment stage, then we will explicitly deploy this. So I will say deploy to version one and I will say deploy to stage. Now we will go back to stages. We will say version one. We are going to copy the invocation URL. Correct. So right now, if we look at course here in the left panel, this is not configured yet, right? So right now we will leave it as it is. And then I will open sublime over here. And here I have one file that is index.html. So this is the very simple HTML file here. What we are doing is we have a form over here and then we have input field and the submit button. And then again, uh, we have one label and the uh, get data button. That's all. And here within script, we have two function that is going to basically invoke the API endpoint. So this is basically the Ajax uh, call that we are making. Correct. So here we have two methods that represent the uh, get call and the post call. Correct. So let me quickly replace the URL over here and paste it over here saying slash course demo. And again, I am going to copy this, paste it in the another function and we are good. Right. So what's happening is that, uh, this function would be triggered based on the hash get data click. So basically this will perform a get call and the another function that would get triggered on the submit button that is over here and this will trigger the post request. So now let's have a look at this page in the browser so that you, you will get more idea about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a simple HTTP server. So I will say Python three HTTP dot server. And now it is serving at port 8000. I will navigate to browser. Correct. And I will say O dot O dot 8000, right? So basically this is what it looks like. Please don't judge my HTML skills. And what we are going to do is we are going to say inspect and we will navigate to console to see if there are any errors coming in. Okay. So this is basically the name that we will enter and we will say post data. So this will trigger the post request and then uh, we will finally say get data. This will trigger the get request, right? So that's what is mentioned in the code itself. So if I quickly take you through the Ajax method, so the type is get content type. We don't need, I can remove this basically expected return type. That is JSON from the Lambda function or the API, the URL that is the invocation URL to invoke that we have copy and paste it from the HTTP API. And then we have success and, uh, error function that would trigger accordingly. And here we are doing console log success, whatever data that is coming. Right. And then uh, what we are doing is we are also updating the label, right? So this data from get label would get updated with whatever response that we are receiving, right? So that's basically the get function. Now let me quickly take you through the post function. So here, what we are doing is on line 46, we are fetching the form data. That is the name. So whatever value that we will enter in this text box would be fetched over here. And it would be passed as the payload that is name colon, whatever the value that we have kept in this text box, right? So that would be stored in the form data. Then we have the Ajax call type is post content type that is application slash JSON. Then the payload actual payload, we are stringifying it. Then the actual URL that we want to call and again, the success and the error function. So that's the very high level of this index.html. So now let's try to invoke our API or let's make the get call and the post call. So here we are. So we will say get data. And as you can see, it raised an exception saying access to whatever resource at the invocation endpoint from origin. Uh, this that is our origin that is 0.0.0 colon 8000 has been blocked by course policy and no access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. So this is an exception that is raised uh, or it has been blocked by the course policy. Now, even if we make a post call, let's say SRC ECDE, and if I say post data, again, it threw an exception that is the course exception. So now how we can overcome this? So to overcome this, let's navigate to API gateway console and click on course from the left panel. Now here we are going to configure this. So click on configure 
now the first option that we have is access control allow origin right so from which origin we want to allow the request so if i mention asterisk over here let's say asterisk and say add so what it will do is it will allow the request from all the origin uh, irrespective of 0.0.0.8000 or google.com or abc.com or any origin right so this is kind of the wild card now if you want to allow the request from specific origin then what you have to do is let me copy this and we will explicitly say allow the request from http colon slash slash 0.0.0 colon 8000 and we will say add now for example you want to allow the request from abc.com then you will enter here abc.com and you will say add right so this will basically allow the request from these domains that are being whitelisted as a part of the access control allow origin so right now we will say http 0.0.0.0 colon 8000 correct now then we have access control allow method so which methods you want to allow so we will say allow get method just for now okay and then we have access control allow headers so here we will say allow content type as a header right you can allow uh, whichever headers that you want you can enter the header over here and say add and then uh, we have access control expose headers if you want to expose any headers then you can enter over here and then uh, you can set the age of the access control and if the actual request is going to pass the credential then you might want to turn it on right so right now we will leave it as it is now we will say save so what we have configured here is allow request from this domain which methods are allowed that is the get method so here uh, we should be able to make the get call and we should not be able to make the post call because we have only allowed the get method right now we are going to deploy this deploy to custom stage that is version one say deploy to stage so let's go back to our page let me reload this now we are going to make a get call so we will say get data and as you can see it returns success get method invoked correct so let me uh, add one line over here saying alert i'll say data okay same i will do for the post method on success will save it i am going to reload it and i will say get data so as you can see it returned the message that is get method invoked even if we look at the lambda function from here we are passing get method invoked correct so we will say okay it means the get method is working fine now let's try to post something i will say post data and as you can see it threw an exception the course policy exception right so this request has been blocked because here we are not allowing the post method. So what we are going to do is we will go back to API gateway. We will say configure and here we can add post method and say save. And we are going to deploy it. Deploy to stage. And let's go back to the domain or the index.html. Let me reload this. I will say src e c d e. I will say post data. And now as you can see it returns successfully it is able to invoke it successfully that is post method invoked correct so this is how basically you can configure cores in the aws http api so within access control allow origin you can enter or add as many domain as you want if you want to allow the request from all the domain then you can add a wildcard over here you can even add a wildcard to all this option but that's not a good idea Correct. So that's basically access control allow origin, which headers you want to allow. So right now we had mentioned allow content type. If you want to allow any other headers, then you can add this. So let's see uh, what happens if I remove this content type over here and let's say save and deploy. Now let's go back over here. Let me reload this. Let me say get data. So get is working fine. It says get method invoked, correct? But with post, we are passing a header saying content type. So let's say post data. So now as you can see, it has been blocked by the course policy because we are not allowing any headers. And if we look at our code, so here we are passing the header. That is one header that is content type, correct? 
So that's the reason it's not allowing. Now if we go back and configure and say allow content type and say add, say save. Let's deploy this. Let me reload this. Let's pass something over here, say post data. And as you can see, it is successful post method invoked, right? So basically you can play around with this parameters and see how it performs to learn, correct? So guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. And as usual, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below. And I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.